fun with Zoom. So we are here in person. We were really, really excited to have you come uh, join us in person. So understand why that was not possible. Um, but uh, you know, I, I so I, I was connected with you, Kelsey, through um, Via, and Via is a uh, micro transit provider. Um, and what microtransit is essentially, and you know, it's a, kind of a, a term that can refer to a lot of different different concepts, but smaller vehicles, more on-demand types of services. And um, in talking to Via, um, they said, you know, you really need to talk with this group out of Cedar Rapids um, because of what they're doing in the transportation space. And I had a conversation with Kelsey and. Uh, was really kind of amazed at what they've been able to do um, out there, uh, creatively using funds through the state of Iowa, through ARPA, um, to pretty quickly ramp up a transportation program. So Kelsey can take you, talk about it a little bit. Um, but Kelsey, I'll hand it over to you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about Horizons, how you got involved in the transportation space, and then what the last year has been like for you in uh, starting up an entire transportation service out there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so Horizons was formerly three different separate agencies that did three different things. So internally, we do Meals on Wheels, uh, financial coaching, and of course, transportation, as Dave mentioned. Um, so we've actually been in the transportation space since 1993. Um, so what happened is in Cedar Rapids, as happened with many communities, the manufacturing and all of the jobs kind of moved from the centralized downtown location that was very walkable and close um, and things kind of started to sprawl a little bit that we've seen happen in a lot of communities in the past 30 years. And when this happened, um, there's a particular community and, and subgroup in Cedar Rapids that's called the Wellington Heights neighborhood. Um, this neighborhood has a lot of late shift, second and third shift employees. And once this urban sprawl started to happen, they were no longer able to get to and from their jobs. Um, many of the homes in that neighborhood do not own vehicles. Um, and because of perceived safety concerns, cabs refused to take calls. And so this was highlighted through a televised town hall. And as a result of that town hall, a really strong collaboration between United Way, um, a local immigrant and refugee service house, Harambe House, um, and other local community groups got together and founded what they called Neighborhood Transportation Service. Um, so the very first year, we had one used minivan that we inherited that had already 100,000 miles on it when we got it. And we did about 40 rides um, that year. Our first employee was actually someone who had previously worked second and third shift and switched to be an NTS employee to get people to and from work. Um, and since then, as Dave mentioned, we are now the first, um, one of the first micro transit providers in Iowa, and we do about 40,000 rides a year. And we serve all of the Cedar Rapids metro area, which encompasses four specific cities and some areas as well. So definitely a lot of change and growth in the past um, almost 30 years. So you serve about 1,500 uh, customers, clients with your transportation service. And mm -hmm. if I understand correctly, um, it was ramped up from a, an ARPA grant through the state just in January of 2021. So you, you went from, from here to here pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Can you just talk to us a little bit about, um, as we... As we listen and learn from your experience, um, what are your main pieces of advice um, for nonprofit uh, leadership, private sector, and government um, when they're thinking about doing something big and transformative like you guys have done there? Yeah, I think that's a, a fantastic question. Um, so when I first took over uh, leadership of NTS, it was three years ago. Um, and one of the first things I did was approach the situation um, with an eye towards advancement and entrepreneurship. Um, I'm fortunate that the executive director of NTS is now the CEO of Horizons. So I have a lot of historical support and knowledge, which I'm super thankful for. Um, but I came in with kind of a new approach. We were still doing routes the same way we've been doing them for 20 years on paper. Um, individuals were having to call um, at least 24 hours in advance 
clients to schedule. It was just a little bit archaic and it created a lot of barriers for clients. Um, and so initially, some of the past leadership and discussions for the NTS program have been, oh, well, we're a nonprofit. We can't invest X thousands of dollars into technology. Um, and really, we should wait for a for-profit arm to do that and then kind of connect with that or things like that. And so I really approached the situation, maybe because I came from for-profit, I'm really not sure. Um, but I approached the situation with the ideal that we as the nonprofit entity could kind of step into that role to be the lead and to push our communities into technology. And so the rescue plan funding was transformative because as you all know, as a nonprofit coming across tens of thousands of dollars to invest in a new technology is challenging because we have to make that case to our donors. Um, but thankfully, those innovative grants allowed us to do that. And now we are at the forefront of leading the change in technology. And so just since January of this year, um, we've reversed our budget deficit. We're exceeding pre-COVID ridership numbers. The growth has just been unbelievable. And more importantly, we've set ourselves up as a transportation leader in Iowa. And so not only are we doing our second and third shift work transportation, but we've been approached by independent municipalities who want their own form of actual full public transit in a micro transit space. And we're in talks to bring that to them. So it not only allowed us to increase our existing program, but to take the lead and support other individuals in initiating and beginning new transportation programs. So it's been transformative. It has been an absolutely crazy busy eight months but it's also been incredibly fun and exciting and just all of the change and advancement that we're able to take part in because we took a little bit of the risk and the leap in the beginning to utilize those funds that were available to us. Awesome. That's pretty impressive, you guys. Um, so I'm going to close with one last question for you. Okay. We've had a lot of discussion here today um, about uh inclusivity, welcomeness, and, you know, we talked a lot about the rider experience and, you know, really breaking down silos and barriers across the region. And if you haven't been to Cedar Rapids, it really is like a mini Milwaukee region in many ways, um, you know, with a dense downtown core and, a, a, you know, a, a lot of, of uh, suburban areas. Um, so uh, talk to us a bit about as you're providing the services um, what does that look like for you, um, that rider experience? I mean, providing something that is uh, high quality, uh, dignified, something that any one of us would choose uh, to use to, to get to our job. Yeah, that's a fantastic question. So the increase of dignity and equity and autonomy was super important to us in looking at providing and reaching out with a micro transit provider. One thing that we have seen um, one, just historically, NTS serves 50% of our riders are black. And so we serve minority populations in the Cedar Rapids and greater metro area. And so we see that the transportation barriers for these groups are obviously higher because we're serving them at a much higher rate. Our population is only about 8%. Um, and so we already see that us existing in this space is helping move the needle forward and providing transportation equity. What we've seen since launching into a micro transit space is not only are we increasing that equity and access, um, but we're also increasing autonomy and availability through the rider experience. Um, so with the app that we have that's custom, one, it's translated into three different languages and is compatible with screen readers. So individuals who have limited English proficiency can now access NTS, whereas in the past, it was much harder for them because they would still have to call in and try to communicate outside of their familiar language. And so now they're able to do that independently in their own time, which we see increasing a lot of autonomy. The other thing we see is in the past, individuals who um, needed wheelchair accessible transportation would have to call in advance, pre-schedule that. We would often send out a wheelchair accessible vehicle kind of just for them. It wasn't really the exact same rider experience. With the app-based program, individuals are now able to just simply turn on a wheelchair accessibility need and the system automatically sends that bus out. And so now what we see is instead of having this sort of separate but same experience, individuals who need assistance um, and have assistive devices are on the same vehicles and interacting
connecting and getting the same rider experience with the supports they need as other people. And so we just see that creating this increased sense of community autonomy and connectivity. Um, the other thing is we serve a lot of individuals who may be dependent adults who have a variety of different concerns or issues or disabilities. And the app itself, in the presence of both the web or mobile app, while still having the phone to support them, creates this autonomy because even if you aren't comfortable talking on the phone to someone else, um, even if your reading level is lower, there are things like photos, and so they can use photos to book instead of having to read. Um, and so it's just really this great opportunity for individuals to take control of their own transportation um, and really have that say in that connection, just like you or I might if we've had a longer night out, call an Uber or a Lyft to get home. And that same sort of on-demand, easy access, easy user experience is what was so important to us. And so being able to do that while still keeping the price to our end user low has just been a fantastic success. Our riders love the app. 75% um, of them book through the web or mobile app. And the 25% who don't, we're still here to serve by phone. And so we're really reducing barriers and increasing that experience. That's awesome. Um, I don't know what you're talking about of like late night rides home on Ubers. <laughs> Um, <laughs> does anybody know? It? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Kelsey. Uh, this is fantastic. I'm really happy that we were able to connect. Um, you know, I, I think that your, your example is, you know, a lot that, uh, you know, we can learn from here in Milwaukee and many other, uh, similar nonprofits or, you know, any kind of organization anywhere, anywhere around. So, uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, you can hang tight if we, we're going to have a few questions and answers at the end, but in the meantime, we're going to bring up our next uh, um, guest. So um, I will kind of just leave you here in Zoom limbo for a bit, and then um, I'll welcome uh, my friend Orlando Owens up to the stage uh, from the Joseph Project. So thank you, Kelsey.